Hi, my name is Tom Sayers. I, I live in Tallinn, Connecticut. Um, about five years ago, I got very interested in kestrels and nest boxes to try and build a population back in Connecticut. And I realized really early on that probably the limiting factor for me going anywhere with this was my extreme fear of heights. Because they do like the boxes up high, and there's some discrepancy on how high, but certainly not five feet, <laughs> which is about as far as I was going to go. So I came up with this uh, sliding pole design, and I posted this on the American Kestrel Partnership website, just a little bit about it, and I got quite a few responses, and I realized no matter what type of documents I put together, it really didn't do it justice, and it would be very hard to understand how this whole thing works. So I want to make two things perfectly clear. First, we are not in prime Kestrel habitat, we are in my driveway. <laughs> um, secondly, I am a professional wildlife photographer, but this is not a professional video. This is done on my wife's point and shoot, and she's on the other side of this thing trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. <laughs> so, having said that, uh, I thought it'd be best if I take the camera for a second and show you the components, and then we'll back off and I'll actually put this together to give you some idea of how this. Um, how this works. I think there's some distinct advantages to this. First of all, we'll start with the 4x4 that I'm standing next to. Anywhere you can put a 4x4, this will work. Um, I go down about 30 inches in New England. That's about as far as you're going. I do not use concrete. I just pack it tight. Um, it seems to be fine. Is it wobbly when this is all set up? It does sway some. In wind, it sways quite a lot. The kestrels don't care. In the last five years, I've had probably over 100 breeding pairs of kestrels in this setup and there's never been an issue they don't seem to bother by it one bit. The other advantage of the 4x4 is that if I can I'll find an existing fence line uh, and actually just lag it to a fence post or a good solid gate post or a corner post that kind of thing uh, which saves you all the digging and, it, and gives you lots of flexibility because you can get out in the middle of the habitat where the birds want to be uh, but you're not plunk in the middle of somebody's hay lot. It's, it's on an existing fence line, so the farmers are fine with that. Uh, it, it's not good to be used with trees, but frankly, I pretty much stay away from trees, even lone trees. I find the kestrels want to be out in the open, really in the open, so I tend to just have a freestanding as, out there as far as I can get it. Um, the other advantage I think this has is that, as you see, once I put this together, as you're raising the box, you're able to rotate the box about 280 degrees, so you're not limited to the orientation you might be in a tree because the tree's leaning the wrong way or a building side facing north. You can orient this, you know, south, southeast or wherever you want after it's up, which I think can be an advantage. And the other thing is, of course, when you're lowering it, you're working at about eight, maybe eight and a half feet and when it's raised up it's between 12 and a half and 13 feet. So this is what I did out of desperation to make it work for me and it you know seems to be working so maybe it'll help somebody out there. So I'm gonna come over here and grab the camera now and go over to the components So hang on for the ride. I know it's gonna look crazy with me walking with this thing. Here's what you need. Uh, you need 4x4. Four four. We already showed you that. Uh, 10 feet long is fine. I bury it about 30 inches. If you're lagging it to a fence post, an 8-footer is enough because you're not below ground at all. Um, two inch and a half pipe clamps. A 4x4, four four, about 4 inches long with a screw in the, in the center. That's for support. You'll see that later. A couple of pieces of plywood, 3 and a half inches wide by maybe 6 inches long. Two of them. Hear the neighbor's dog there. Um, two pieces of metal hanging strap. The plumbers use this for hanging metal and electricians. About 10 inches long, perforated, so you can put screws through it. Uh, a piece of PVC, about 28 to 30 inches long. The inside diameter should be an inch and a half. And then, I've already done this to save time, but this is a piece of inch and a quarter conduit. It's been cut to 8 feet long. They come 10 feet long. And it's been U-bolted to the back of the box. So there's the front, and then you can see how it just goes through the back. Okay, we get to hear the neighbor's kids fight, and that's going to be awesome. So, this has already been put together. So now I'm going to hand this to my wife, and I'm going to have her let you see how this whole thing goes together.
Alright. First. Let's get into the field of view here. Can you see this, Janet? Yes. Okay, I've slide. I've already... Here comes the neighbor's dog. This is awesome. Here, I've already taken the PVC and slid it over the pipe. And I just basically lean this up against here for a minute. Take the PVC, raise it as high as it'll go, and this is how I locate where my pieces of ply were going to go. And I just roughly mark where that's going to go. So it's going to be centered there and there. The, the reason for the plywood, the reason for the plywood is bolts will drag on this 4x4 if you don't space it out a little bit. So this is a uh, basic 3 8 inch whatever. So these go in like this. Okay, that's that. Now, I use sheetrock screws for everything. This is about an inch and a half sheetrock screw. I will actually get my strap somewhat in place, and I put the strap centered somewhat on the pieces of plywood because that's where the PVC is going to ride. So I just kind of want to get this in place a little bit. If I were taller, this would be easier. Okay. Now, here's my level. I grab this. Swing this over. Now, usually where we like to put the boxes, it can be windy because it's wide open. So I'll often secure the pipe clamp on both sides to the 4x4, four four, but also I'll drive screws into the side to really cinch it up tight because occasionally things will move, but not if you, not if you double, double tight. Okay, there's that. Now, this is the first time I've had to get on the ladder, so hang on. Don't we wish all the spots we work on were flat like asphalt, but they're not. I'm just putting the other clamp in now. Okay. Now while I'm here, can you see the box, Janet? Yes. Okay, while I'm here, before I finish doing this, just to show you, I guess, um, I'm two steps up the ladder, three steps. <laughs> And if I'm really daring four, this is as high as you'll ever have to get to clean out boxes, bands, what, whatever you're doing. Um, this is the maximum height, and this is about where I'm comfortable, so that's the end of it. So, anyway, that's that. Now, I'll get the ladder out of the way. Okay, so, strap, strap, coming from the sides. Now basically, uh, you want to kind of have your block ready. At this point, we're going to slide it, and you can see what's going to happen now. And Janet, if you can, can you get to the box there? Can you see the box? Just back up or view back. Anyway, that box right now is at about, probably close to 13 feet. Okay, you can come in closer now. I'm taking, come on, come on in. I'm taking my two by four. Now I'm supporting this one hand. It's very light. It's not that bad. I'm taking my two. I'm taking my two by four, sticking it under here. That's just kind of like a safety thing. 
if I have the drill in the right hand. Okay. All right. This is always in place except when you're lowering the box. Now at this point, Janet doesn't need to show this, but basically I can rotate this box any way I want, which is kind of nice. Leave enough space for your conduit clamp. So this is going to get secured here with two screws. Sometimes in very windy environments, these come with two holes. I'll actually drill a third hole and use a third screw again, just as sort of a double guarantee against it spinning. So that's that. I've got one more clamp on the top. Now I guess you could argue that this clamp maybe isn't necessary. But I, I think probably it does at the very top of the 4x4. And again, if you wanted your 4x4 to be higher, that wouldn't be a bad idea because the higher you can put this top clamp against the 4x4, the less movement you'll get in the conduit. So this could probably be a little bit longer, but I just grabbed something from the pile. So this goes here. basically it. So now, don't, don't shut it up. So now, you're in the field, you need to lower the box. You get your ladder, you go up. This clamp must come off. It's got to come off. You can't lower the box with that top clamp in place. But after that, it's simply a matter of Taking your block, your safety block. Lo you don't take the bottom clamp off, you just have to loosen it. And then you lower your box. You see the box? Yes. Okay, and then you lower the box to your working height. Do what you have to do. Push the pipe up. Put the block in to take all the weight off yourself. Tighten your lower clamp, reapply your top clamp, and that's basically it. So, I didn't mean this to be all about me. This isn't all about me, but if it makes it easier for somebody out there, uh, there's a lot of flexibility to it. It's safe, very safe. I have a friend in Connecticut who goes to the top of a 28-foot step ladder to monitor some of his boxes. I don't care how long he's been doing it. He's, he's asking for trouble, and I, you know, I don't want to sign up for that. Um, so I guess that's basically it. I'm going to post this video, if I can figure out how to do it, onto the American Kessel Partnership website, probably under the box design discussion group. And there will be a couple of Word documents there with listing the different components and, and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. Allison and the other people at the Peregrine Fund who created this website, I think, did a fantastic job and I, I really hope people use it and I think it's got real real potential you know for this kind of stuff and trust me I'll be asking lots of questions as we get on this road and hopefully some of you can help me with some of the stuff that I'm involved with um, we're gonna try some color banding and some telemetry this year so should be the learning curve should be pretty interesting on that but we're hoping to get some good information um, my name, so my name is Tom my email is Sayers S-A-Y-E-R-S dot Tom, T O M, at gmail.com if you have further questions. Um, but other than that, I guess, I guess we're done. Thanks.